Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Ethan Drew, and we've got a very special guest with us today, Mr. Jay Nunn. He's well known for his role in voice play, but he also has a lot of very good solo work. Say hello to the audience, my friend. What's going on, y'all? It's Jay Nunn. <laughs> always have to uh, throw in that iconic riff of his yes, sir. but uh, we are super excited to have him on today this is going to be episode 18 of the vocast so if you guys are enjoying the content make sure you drop a like throw a comment down there below as well it helps with the algorithm and if you're enjoying the content so much that you want to contribute to the success of the channel and the future of the channel there is a patreon link down in the description below not required to enjoy the content by any means. So, Jay Nunn, I'm going to have you give a brief elevator pitch as to who you are and what you do, but being that this is a long-awaited podcast, your audience and my audience both have been waiting for this. They probably know who you are. We just kind of, for those that don't know you, give them a bit of an elevator pitch as to who you are. Elevator pitch? What is an elevator pitch? It, oh, it's, it's like, because it's quick, right? It's like the elevator is going up a couple of floors, so you got to tell them who you are real quick. Who you are, what you do while you're on the elevator. So it's like, you know, a bit of a short explanation, pretty much. All right, what's going on, y'all? My name is Jay Nunn. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter, rapper, producer, actor, uh, home comedian, <laughs> <laughs> and um, just all around uh, fun person. I love, love to perform, love to make music, and love to make memories. So that's what I'm all about. Yeah. So, guys, like I said, if you're excited to learn about Jay Nunn and his musical journey, as well as many other aspects of his life, make sure you drop a like, drop a comment down below, even if it's just a smiley face. With that said, we are going to jump promptly into episode 18 of the Vocast. We're going to start off with our first question of the day. It is, what is your favorite or preferred drink? Ooh. Uh, when I first started, well, no, not when I first started drinking. So my favorite drink, I drink this all the time. is honey whiskey and uh, ginger ale. That's, that's my favorite. Oh, drink. I'm going to give you a, um, ginger ale to try because I don't know if I told you this or not, but ginger ale is my current drink of pleasure. Mm -hmm. And this I'm is actually right now I'm drinking <laughs> it as we this speak. is, that's awesome. This is my current ginger ale of choice. Hmm. Boylan's ginger ale. Boylan. Yeah, huh? Hmm. You can find this at local stores up here close to where I live in North Carolina. Um, I'm not exactly sure where also they sell them outside of Food Lion, but okay. these are about these are about a dollar a bottle, give or take. These are by far my favorite ginger ale. Okay. I was gonna stop at a uh, Food Lion later tonight, so maybe I'll uh, see if I see it in there. It's, um, have you ever heard of Reed's ginger ale? No. They're, so they're going to be on the soft drink aisle, but they're probably going to be towards the back. You'll have to look for the bottled drinks. You should be able to find it. It's right there near the root beer. Okay. Boilings. Refreshing. <laughs> it's extremely refreshing, man. Okay. I, I have, excuse me. I have, um, so you know those mason jars, right? Mm-hmm. I have a mason jar and a half full of bottle caps, full all from Boylan's, and I'm using this to try to, you know, demonstrate my loyalty to Boylan Bottling Co. So we can get a sponsorship at some point. <laughs> if there's any sales reps that are watching the channel, I really would love to work with you guys because um, I love your ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> is it like is is the ginger like super thick? Like is the is the ginger like you can taste the ginger in it or what like what is it like uh, it's it's pretty sweet uh the ginger's not it's not in your face but you can taste it definitely okay think of um like your canada dry but a little more ginger okay i probably would like that then because i like you I, probably i, I like the ginger to be in my face a little bit you know yeah there's a country store not far from where i live that they, they sell some really hard like like German ginger ale or something. Mm -hmm. I took, I thought I was going to like it. Popped the cap off, took one sip and I was like, <laughs> it's too much. It's it way strong. too much. Yeah. Yeah. It was way it's too much, good. but 
This one is by far my favorite. Mm. It's not complete. I mean, and it plus there's not that much in it either. Nothing crazy for it, like ingredients either. You just got carbonated water, cane sugar, ginger, lemon, and lime. Natural flavors, citric acid, caramel color. Yeah, I'll give it a try. I love ginger ale. It's my favorite. That's really the only soda I drink from from time to time. Honestly, I don't really drink anything else. Oh, yeah. Same boat. Yeah. I actually quit drinking soda, I would say, July of 2017. Mm-hmm. The only soda I drink now is ginger ale. And I guess it's just soda by definition but yeah but that's uh that's definitely my favorite drink of pleasure right now you said the honey whiskey is your favorite yeah that's some good stuff is that um jack daniels yeah ah gotcha gotcha yeah hold up what do i got yeah yeah i got jack daniels in here yeah, yeah boy. a couple other brands that make it too but i i tend to lean towards the jack daniels with the honey whiskey absolutely all right, diving into the more music-related questions, and this one's going to be, this one might take a little bit to answer, very broad questions, so take as much time as you need, but what or who got you into music? My mom, for sure, absolutely. Um, I, grew up, I grew up around um, musicians and singers because my mom sang in Bible study choir, so when I was a baby like I was already like around all of that that sound and, and loud noise and uh powerful voices and really dope musicians yeah and then it was mainly your mom that got you in so another two second part of this question is how did you find out that you had a voice so like how did you find out that you could sing like what time in your life did that happen super young um i found out i could sing uh, about around the time where i started you know talking and making words and stuff my mom would sing stuff and um oh there it is yep excuse me um <laughs> uh, my mom would sing something to me and you know we, we're all uh creatures of uh repetition and 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 copycatting pretty much so she would sing something and i would sing it back and you know she try and sing something a little more difficult and i'd sing it back and it'd be like oh, okay he got a little bit of a voice on him already um <laughs> but it wasn't nothing like serious like i wasn't trying to like be like a, a a toddler trying to come out and be like a singer and an artist and stuff it was just you we realized there was something there you know absolutely yeah i got you so back when you were even a toddler mm-hmm Super young, super, super young. I've had several guests on here who have actually like, it's been almost opposite. Like they've only recently found out that this is something that they're actually pretty good at. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, kind of interesting to see the trend of like whenever, how long it's taken people to really realize that this is one of the things that they're meant to do in life. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people kind of grow up, you know, like kids, they kind of make you do like a music class and you kind of, you kind of grow up learning all these kitty songs and stuff. So everybody like kind of grows up using their voice, but a lot of people kind of don't realize that it's a thing they want to do, like, you know, to make a living until like later in life. But I knew it like super early on that this is what I wanted to, to do. Like I wanted to be an artist, like an actor, an entertainer of some, of some sort, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's got you, gotten you this far for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, um, who are some of the most influential figures, both in your life as well as your musical career? Mm, my life and musical career. Well, obviously, my mom. That's that goes without saying. That's easy. Yeah. Um, um musical influences super early on were like Stevie Wonder, uh, Michael Jackson, um, The Temptations pretty much any artist from Motown. Like I was heavily, 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 heavily into Motown as a young, a young kid. And that's kind of like where I kind of started finding my, my voice at like before my voice like changed and stuff mm -hmm. um, like puberty. So after puberty, it was like music, soul child, Justin Timberlake, Neo, um, John legend, Usher mm -hmm. and people like, like that who I would try and, you know, 
hone use their their voice and their stage demeanor and everything to like hone my skills and i can kind of see some of that inspiration in in your individual work 100 percent mm -hmm. i went really for those that didn't don't know i usually try to do like a deep dive on my guests like individual work in addition to their group work mm -hmm. before the before they come on the the podcast and i took a bit of a deep dive into all the available work Janon has out there and it's very obvious to me at least that he's taken some serious inspiration from some of the greats like like late michael jackson mm -hmm. temptations all of the good good motown stuff mm -hmm. definitely <clears throat> some really seriously good singers out there you're taking inspiration from what are um what is something that any of these influential figures has said to you that stuck with you your entire music journey? Um, something they said to me, like if I had like a conversation with one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I've never talked to any of any of those. Uh, <clears throat> like primarily, what would be something maybe even that your mother might have said to you that stuck with you? Like really stood out. Really stood out. I don't know if anything like super specific like stands out, but my mom has always been like my biggest fan. Like once I like around when I was like 12, 13 and I made the decision that I want to be a solo artist and like, you know, chase the, the, the music dreams and everything. She's just always been like my, my biggest supporter. Like she would never like, you know, she was always honest with me. She'd be like, Oh, that sounds good. Oh, that sounds like boo boo. Oh, you might want to work on this, like, or whatever. Like, and she was always super supportive, though. She was like, I believe in you. I know you can do this. You just got to keep putting your whole self into it and just keep going. So not nothing really super specific um, stands out. But I know she always, always would tell me that. And even to this day now, I'm grown. I'm almost in my mid 30s. And she, she's still my biggest um, supporter. She's my, my momager. Like she's always looking out for my, my best interests and, you know, steering me in the right direction or opening my brain up to different different ways of using my gift, you know, or gifts. Yeah. Something that you said, uh, that you said that while you were explaining that, that kind of stuck out to me is putting your whole self into your work. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that some people kind of lose whenever they get into artistry, you know, of any description, but like, especially in music, it's mm -hmm. something that don't lose yourself if you, and make sure that you put your whole self into what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Because people will notice, people will notice when you're not putting your all and putting everything that you are into what you're doing. It's definitely easier said than done. Like I'm, I'm, um, I'm just now starting to put my whole self into my, my new music that I'm creating and stuff. And I, I think it just depends on, you know, how you grew up and what, what you were taught in the industry at a younger age, like cause everybody's trying to sell like, you know, some type of image or some type of personality or, or whatever, you know? So you just kind of got to figure out after you get past all of that nonsense, you just trying to got to figure out what you, what you want to portray as a, a artist and as, as a human and whatever, you know, and putting your whole self into something is, is scary. You know what I mean? Like, cause you're showing everybody, every part of, of who you are, like it's super vulnerable. So absolutely. And there, there's a lot of strength there. I mean, mm -hmm. for, for there's a lot of people out there who really struggle with sharing their image, who they really are with the world, mm -hmm. because they may not like what they are, who they are. And that's uh, that takes a lot of strength for a lot of people. Yeah. But that right there, I've noticed is whenever you do start showing who you really are and putting your whole self into what you're doing that's when you begin to succeed. At least I know in my experience. Mm -hmm. If you don't acknowledge it, people will it'll acknowledge who you're not. Right, right. I agree. I agree with that for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to take a quick step away for a second. There's a technical issue, but guys, I will be right back. All right, guys, sorry for the quick intermission. We had some technical difficulties, but we have returned. So moving along to our next question is, um, who were, let's see, do you play any instruments? And if so, what are they? 
Uh, the instrument question. So I used to play them more, but I can still dabble a little bit on the piano and the guitar. And I actually can do a little, a little teeny bit on the drums. Um, I used to play the violin a lot, but I don't own one anymore. So I don't really get to, you know, touch it anymore. But if someone gave me one, I could probably squeak out a couple of notes. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been playing each of those? Mm, violin was first. I started playing when I was nine and I played up until I was about 22, 23 ish. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I started playing piano, um, self-taught in high school, like freshman year. So what was I about like 14 or so? So, and I still play it, play it now, but definitely not as much as I used to play when I was younger, but I can still accompany myself. So that's really all I was trying to do with it. I wasn't trying to be like the next Stevie wonder on the keys or something like that. You know? so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and guitar was the last, well, no, I guess drums was the last one. Guitar was after piano. I started playing guitar when I was like 23, 24. Um, and again, just learning how to accompany myself so that, you know, if I want to take a couple of singer, singer guitar player gigs or something like that, or, you know, play one of my songs on the guitar, you know, just playing chords or whatever, rhythm, um, rhythm guitar. Um, and then drums, I started messing around with probably like five or six years ago, just to, you know, just to, you know, get a better feel for the pocket and stuff like that. Cause drummers do a lot and people don't realize that they're doing, they're doing as much as they're doing. Um, oh yeah. So I was like, let me see if I can just keep like a simple beat on here, you know, and, mm -hmm. and like, or try and play and sing at the same time, like play a, a simple beat and sing at the same time. And I can do that. So I was like, okay, I can do a little teeny bit on the drums, but I would never call myself a, a drummer. Cause those, those, uh, <laughs> they're doing like 50 things at once like they're using both hands both feet like every it's too it's too much it's oh too i much. know so yeah. um, i'm gonna go on a bit of a tangent here but i'm just curious so have you seen any of those viral videos on tiktok lately of the foo fighters drummer chad smith no what what is he doing <clears throat> um so there's there's this there there are creators on tiktok who uh, it appears they invite uh, famous drummers and they bring them into their studio and they have they do a segment in their in what they do is they will take a random song that that drummer does not know and they will put them to the test, give them complete musical freedom to come up with the drum part for the song that they're hearing. Okay. And if they don't know or they'll do it for a song they don't know at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming, you know, the Foo Fighters. Yes. So Chad Smith is an absolute legend on the drums. And we had on this particular one that one that I was watching is that Chad Smith was played Mr. Brightside. No, he was played um I believe it's called Bury Me by Th 30 Seconds to Mars. Okay. And he I mean, he was hearing a drumless track and he just like they just let him play. He's sitting here vibing to the song and talking to himself. And then he just completely comes with his comes up with his own drum part and just starts playing along. He has never heard the song before in his life. And he's sitting here playing the, one of the most complicated drum beats and fills I have ever heard. Mm -hmm. If you like drums and you like um, seeing pure, raw talent in music, whew, you look up Chad Smith on TikTok and you will find the video. It is hilariously cool. You're gonna have to send me a, a couple of those. I definitely like nerding out about stuff like that from time to time. It is one of those things where, have you ever seen like just a video or just seen something and you're just in raw, like complete awe at the amount of talent shown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, I, my mouth hit the floor when I was watching that. It was so cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure I send you that off camera, but I was just yeah. curious if you'd heard that before. No, I haven't heard it, man. Definitely, definitely send that over. Like as a singer and a like everything is good to like, you know, break away from vocal, vocal based stuff all the time and like hear some, some different takes on stuff. So yeah, yeah. Send that over, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun giving that a watch and they did some other drummers too, but that one was my favorite without a doubt. All right. So 
Moving along to the next question, what are some of the things that you do in your off time when you're not singing, recording, or in your case, in the Navy? Off time. There's no such thing as off. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> um, nah, there's a such thing as off time. Thank goodness. Um, most of the time, the first thing I try to do if I have off time is um, I either hit the gym first or second, or I hit up some type of video game of some sort, whether I, you know, take it back to the past to like the PS2 or Nintendo, oh, or the, yeah. or the Nintendo DS or, or something, or, you know, I'll get online with some of my, my, my homies and we'll, we'll, you know, mess around on like Apex and Fortnite and Call of Duty and stuff like that. And I'm not even really good at any of those games like that, but I, I do, I have my moments every now and then I have my superhero moments every now and then. Absolutely. Man. What were some of the older games that you played on like say PS2? PS2. So I'm, I'm weird, man. Like um, <laughs> I'm one of those people who likes to finish the, um, you know, when they make multiple versions, like, like this game, number one, this game, number two, this game, number three, like I have yeah. to finish all of them. So I used to play this game called Ape Escape when I was a kid, when I was a little <laughs> kid. Um, and I beat all of them except for one. And I was like, oh man, this is why I didn't beat this one because we didn't have a PS2. So yeah. um, last year I went and brought a PS2 and um, just slowly been playing this. Uh, I think it's Ape Escape 3 is what it's called. I think so. Um, and I just been slowly been playing it and beating it. And I'm like, I'm getting all this nostalgia because I'm like, oh man, I remember when I was like nine, 10 years old playing this game that like none of my friends ever heard of or ever played before. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm in my 30s now playing this game. And I'm like, oh man, I remember when I used to use this gadget to catch this monkey and did it. Like it's super weird. Like, um, but that's the one I'm playing right now. And I, I love it, man. It's just, just a weird game that I would have never played unless you know somebody who cared about me gave it to me and was like you're gonna enjoy this you know? yeah there's um i i am guilty of playing a fairly weird game also on uh playstation 2 so i still have mine and occasionally i like to boot this game up and just play it all over again so do you ever remember playing pitfall from the 90s what's the it called again pitfall Pitfall. I definitely heard of that. I don't know if I ever played it though. So, um, in short, it's, um, I don't remember the name of the character, but you would just, you would swing over pits and you would avoid like alligators and stuff. It was an old nineties arcade game. I think if I rec recall correctly. So, um, the creators, th there's this game studio that made a 3d version. Well, 3d, like free roam ish kind of version of this a bit of yeah. a reboot, if you will. And I remember my dad buying this game for me when I was little and I absolutely loved every minute of it. It mm -hmm. is, it is genuinely one of the funniest games I have ever played. <laughs> <laughs> it is hilarious. It's the, it's the nostalgia, bro. Like when I'm you, telling you, when you play certain games and you get that feeling, it's the same thing as like, like when my mom cooks or my sister or whoever, like when they cook something they used to make for you, like when you were a kid and you smell it, you automatically go back to like that time when you were like 11 years old, eating your favorite meals. The same thing with the video game. Like as soon as I hear the music, I'm like, Oh snap. That's the same theme from like 98. Like, you yeah, know, like, it, you know, so it's dope, man. Like it's a weird, thing, but it's, it's dope. You know, it, it is incredible. I'm going to have to uh, check out that pit, that pitfall though. I'm going to check that out too. If you can find a copy of it, it was not a very well known game at the time and still isn't. Okay. But if you're able to find a copy of it, eBay's probably your best bet. Yeah. It is genuinely one of the funniest games ever. The main character is supposed to be something. It, his na name is nicknamed Pitfall Harry. And mm. it is just like he's played off as this like explorer, or whatever. They crash from a plane. I'm not going to explain the whole thing, but they crash mm -hmm. in, the, in like a place kind of like the Amazon or whatever. Uh -huh. There's like funny little natives that you get to go around uh, punching in the face and you throw dynamite at people and like, you know, <laughs> gorillas chase you all over the map. It's just a really silly, fun little game. It's like a wild, it's like a, a, a Grand Theft Auto in the wild. Kind of, kind of, sort of, yeah. <laughs> I love it though. That's dope, man. Yeah, I'm, I, I'll probably find it somewhere. I'll yeah. Find it. 
But yeah, I, awesome. I like to play video games, man. Just to just to kind of detox and get back to some type of um I don't know, not normalcy, but you know. Like just get back to your roots pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Cause that's what I used to do a lot, man. Just if we if we weren't going out like playing basketball or riding bikes or whatever, we'd be playing video games, you know? So mm-hmm. it's just simple, simple living, man. P- PS2 was my life when I was a kid, 100%. Mm-hmm. I had a PS1 when I was a kid. I didn't have a PS2. My dad um, had a PS1, and I never really played much on there, but I remember my first ever game that I ever played. I believe it was Spyro the Dragon. Oh, yeah. That's another, that's another one. Nostalgia. Again, mm-hmm. like Spyro. Like, if you had a PlayStation, you played Spyro, you played Crash Bandicoot, you played, like, some of these you know, super iconic games that everybody, everybody had, you know? Mm-hmm. 100%. Spyro was my favorite. The um, Pitfall game was my favorite. I had a couple of others that I can't remember the name of that I also really enjoyed. But PS2 was my jam back in the day. Yeah. I, I remember, so you said you played Fortnite, some COD every now and then. Mm-hmm. You still have like a PS3 or PS4 or anything like that? I have a, I have a PS4, yeah. So. I got you. What other games do you play on PS4? Honestly, those those are the main ones I play. Every now and then I try and play like a story game on there too. Like um, the last one I was playing was Guardians of the Galaxy, um, and I haven't I haven't gotten to finish that one yet because I started grabbing you know going back into the old school game bag, yeah. the DS and the PS2, and then I had gotten a Switch, so I was playing stuff on the Switch too, and. Just, you know, going back and forth between different systems. But the last one I played was Guardians of the Galaxy. And that, that was pretty decent. Yeah. 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 Do you ever play on the DS? Did you ever play any Mario related games? Not yet. I, um, again, again, with the, uh, the games that have one, two, three, four. Um, so me and wifey beat Luigi's Mansion 3. Ooh, on, that's a good um, one. On the, D, uh, on the Switch. And then I was like, I just realized I never played the second one. And I was like, what was the second one on? I didn't even know it was on what, what system it was on. It was on the DS. So yeah. earlier this year, I went and bought a DS. And I was like, I'm going to beat the second Luigi's Mansion. I literally just beat it like a week ago, you know? Yeah. So yeah. like when I'm traveling and stuff, that's what I do. I play, I either read a, a, a book on the Kindle or I, or, I, or I play old games on the, on the DS. So, but no, I haven't played a Mario game on the DS. There, Just, there, yeah. there's a lot of really good ones out there. There's a lot of really good ones. I love that was, those games, man. That man, there are good pastime. Mm-hmm. It's, there's a lot worse ways to spend your time too. For sure, yeah. There's, there's always worse ways, but video games, man, they make you, they make you, make you think. You know, little puzzles and whatnot. You'd be like, okay, what if, what if, what if I try this? You know, trial and error type of mm-hmm. thing. It's very much like being an artist. You know, like once you get stuck. Somewhere you're like, okay, maybe I should try looking at it this way or, or, or try it this way or whatever. And then you're like, oh, okay, now that, that worked, that worked. Now I'm going on to the next part of the level or the next level or, what, or whatever, you know? Yeah, it's um, actually pretty crazy that things that video games can actually teach you. Mm-hmm. Ooh, bit of a tangent there, but hey, that's uh, awesome. Glad it, to know it, it I have someone you, else. It teaches you to never give up, bro. Like that's one of, that's one of the mm-hmm. first things. I learned as a child, like with video games, because my siblings didn't really play with me that much. So I would have to play a lot on my own. So I played adventure, adventure games. And, you know, you get some of those games back in the day to get you so pissed off. You're like, I'm stuck on this thing. I don't have Google. I, I don't, I can't call the hotline. Da, 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 da. Nobody can help me with this. So you kind of got to like, you know, put your, put your big boy draws on and figure out how to get to the next part of the the level and you know people are like oh you're wasting your time playing this and da, da, da. i'm like no nah, i'm problem solving dog i don't know about mm-hmm. you i'm about to figure this shit out you know I mean? yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, right right You'd be surprised oh. at how useful they can actually be in mm-hmm. like knowledge transfers never quit none whatsoever mm-hmm Ooh, that was a good one it's good to know that i have uh someone else to potentially play games with in the future for sure. I'm always down. Always. Yeah. What CODs did you play? That was one thing I wanted to ask. Say that again? What Call of Duties did you play? Um, I didn't really start getting into Call of Duty. I got in late because I know a lot of my friends were playing it. 
when we were in college and I was like, nah, I'm still on the Halo thing. I'm not really trying to play, play cloud. I was like playing Halo and NBA 2K. Those are my two, two games mm-hmm. I played like all the time. Um, yeah. But I didn't really get into COD until uh, like 2018, 2019. Oh, Ooh, that's a, yeah, about 10 years late. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I was super late. Um, so I don't even remember what the names of them were. I just knew some of my homeboys were getting on there and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll try and not, not get killed. Cause you know, Cod, you can get killed in like one shot. Like it's just done, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a really fun game. I've got several of them. Uh huh. I've got several of those and they're, they're a lot of fun. It's rough, man. It's not, it's not an easy game to play online. You know, no. especially not with skill-based matchmaking and some of the most recent CODs. Mm-hmm. That's something that makes playing it very difficult. You will get bopped up real quick. Mm-hmm. Very quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, back to some more music related questions. So mm-hmm. how often do you end up practicing throughout the week and how, how long in these sessions do you typically practice for practice at this point? Um, because of my new job, I practice every day. Um, because I'm learning so much music. And it's, it's different styles of music and it's different styles of singing and it's um, different languages. And so I have to get immersed in like these different cultures and listen to different dialects and how people pronounce things and say and say certain words and um, placement and everything. So like I'm, I literally practice like at least like one to three hours every day at this point. Yeah. And um what does your warm-up routine look like on any given day? And do you have any go-to warm-up exercises? I don't really have a warm-up routine, man. Um, uh, For my new job, I'm singing bass. So I don't really, it's not like a heavy lift for for me. It's actually better for me if I don't warm (laughs) warm up, honestly. So that that bottom register is a little more full than it usually is, you know? Um, Yeah. But if anything, if I do, if I do need to, you know, knock the cobwebs off, uh, so to speak, I kind of do some, some lip trills and, um, some, some humming, like light, light humming. And then I'll, I'll listen to some, uh, I'll, I'll play some songs that are like in my lower, like mid register. And I'll just kind of like lightly sing along to that. But I don't, I don't really have a warm up routine, man, to be honest. And that's, a, that's a trend that I've also noticed with a lot of bass singers um, throughout my podcast years series as well mm-hmm. is, um, I've noticed that not many of them have go-to exercises per se, and don't really have dedicated, um, warm up sessions, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Singing and- bass, you don't really have to be like super warmed up. You know what I mean? Like it's almost depending on what the repertoire is, it's kind of better for you not to be warm at all, you know, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I I know what you mean. I've been there, done that. It's actually, that's a very accurate statement, actually. I, um, because most mornings, like for those that don't know, bass voices are typically the deepest, most rich and the most resonant right after you wake up in the mornings. Right. That's exactly what I was going to, I was going to say is like, if you can keep that, that kind of morning, voice depend and it depends on the group and again the, the the repertoire like for for this group sometimes i have to sing kind of kind of high for a bass i feel like and i'm like hmm so I, I guess i do need to warm up like a little a little bit you know yeah um, to get that fullness mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but um yeah it's very it's very bass baritone e like sometimes you got to kind of think like a tenor for some of that stuff that's above middle c and you know then you got to switch back to thinking like a bass for the stuff that's below C3 or whatever. And you're like, okay, uh, um, I don't want to get too warm because then I'm losing that, that richness, like singing, singing bass in, in this type of setting is, 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 um, it's a heavy lift. Cause you're, you're kind of mm-hmm. having to wear two hats, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of something that I've, I can also relate to. And I'm sure you're able, I'm sure you're able to relate to, is that it? Se- it almost seems like our voice types are kind of stuck in between berries and basses, mm-hmm. and I guess that's what you would call a uh, bass berry. But yeah, it's it, 
I would say that both of our voices are kind of in a really funky little place because we can go pretty darn high. We can also go pretty low for, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's just interesting mm-hmm. because if I remember correctly, so what is, what are your record lows? <clears throat> um, I think like recorded wise, I think I've had to hit like a, like a, what was it? A B, a B, was it a B1 or B? B I think one? it might have been a B flat one, maybe. I think so. So it's like, it's like trying to, to pick what do you want more of in terms of like somebody in your, in your, your choir or your group. Like if it was, if it was me, I would want someone who's more like me who could sing low, but then can also like lead the hell out of a song. You know what I mean? As opposed to just having someone who can just sing low, you know what I mean? But some people, they prefer mm-hmm. having that. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a perk to having someone who just has like a super, super deep resonant voice, you know, and they just yeah. hold that bass down and, and that's it. You know what I mean? There's a perk to that too, but you know, it just depends on who, who it is and what, what, what the group or choir or whatever it is, is, is uh, looking to accomplish for the yeah. sound. Yeah, definitely. What is one of your, uh, what is your, some of your record high natural chest notes? High natural chest notes. Um, I think the highest I've ever done, I know the highest I've ever sung like live was like, I hit like a B flat four live. Yeah. Um, and I literally like, it wasn't nothing like where I was like holding it. Cause I would never try and do anything like that. But I literally like, just barely hit it and then ran down, ran like, yeah. <laughs> like ran, ran right back down from, from that note. But, um, consistently I've been able to hit like a, a, a and a flat four live. And again, it's not holding the note either. It's mm-hmm. just like, I can shout that note out and it sounds good and strong and supported almost a little painful and, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, but it works. It always works for the song, you know? So yeah. You know, oh, I almost forgot. You also have a recorded B flat four and friends on the other side with voice play. Recorded B flat four. Was that is that uh-huh. falsetto though? Right, right there at the end of the song. Yeah, I think that's falsetto though. Falsetto, you know that's. that's oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not chess because I normally don't sing sing up there that much, but um, we can get up there from time to time, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> So you, so you're about your natural chest range ranges from B to B flat to B flat, roughly like as far as like a, a records is concerned. Yeah. 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 What's your daily usable range? Like usable you would, range. Com- yeah. Like you would confidently record with without pushing too hard. I mean, a G, the G, G four, a flat four, a flat four is probably the highest I would go consistently. So that way, you know, I don't, I don't want to damage my, my voice by trying to scream out all these unnecessary high notes. Like, you know, right. Dysphonia um, is bad kids. Yeah. It's very bad. Don't, don't do that to yourself. Cause I used to do that to myself and I'm, I'm surprised I didn't get any vocal damage from, you know, people trying to force me to sing higher and stuff. And I'm in the studio, like screaming my, my brains out, trying to hit these <laughs> ridiculous high <laughs> notes that I had no business of trying to hit in, in the first place, you know? So, right. Yeah. Um, and then lower on the lower side, I would say like, probably like low C, um, low C yeah. daily. And if it's not, if I'm not getting it, then it would be like the D like right above that. D yeah. above low C. Yeah. I'd say I'm about in the same boat. Like we share a pretty much of a pretty common, well, that's something that we both have in common is I'd say we have roughly the same range. Like, range. Yeah. Yeah. That can definitely relate on that front. It's fun though, man, being able to play with your, your voice like that. Cause I didn't do that when I was younger. I really, I really didn't embrace the lower side of my range because I was trying to get a record deal most of the time. And most of the people I saw getting record deals when I was a young cat were tenors. So Oh Nobody yeah. Cared if you had a low a lower range like that. It was like it just wasn't special. I know like high school kids and college kids in my choirs that were like, you know, we're singing bass. They were like, oh yeah, I've got a I've got a decent bass range and I can hit some of these low notes. And it's like, that's not gonna really 
get you anywhere, at least from what I saw, unless you had like a super boomy bass voice. And we all know what that sounds like. As soon as that dude talks, the the walls shake. You know, yeah. <laughs> like they're like they're like, oh, my name's uh, my name's Greg from da da da, and you're like, dang, this dude. So you obviously sing soprano, right? You know, because yeah, <laughs> because you're shaking the walls right now. Yeah, yeah. Most it's, bass singers I knew didn't have that. They nobody had that. You know what I mean? So yeah. You know. If you if side note, if you want to, so are you familiar with who Glenn Miller is? Glenn Miller does not ring a bell. No. So um, I had a podcast with him a couple episodes ago, and he is a choral bass monster. He is okay. the definition of a true basso profundo. So he's he's the one I'm talking about when they speak. Essentially, the yeah. Walls. <laughs> the walls. If, if you get some free time, <laughs> if you get some free time, go listen to the a podcast. I think it's like three episodes back from the one we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. He his voice rattles the entire room he is in that's what i'm saying it is insane uh, like if you didn't what well, the school i grew up in like if you didn't have that or if you didn't have like some super tenor range like like nobody was really checking for you like like that mm-hmm. you're just a normal person you know what i mean so yeah which it yeah. is what it is everybody can't be a a unicorn you know what i mean like it, that's mm-hmm. just the way it works you know absolutely yeah absolutely Oh, but it, I, I enjoy being a bass baritone, though, because mm-hmm. it, it, I can I can go high and low and maintain the quality most of the way too. right. Right. That's and that's favorite. the part that's a lot good. of people, a lot of people lose sight of to the quality. Like everybody's so stuck on the range and it's like, OK, but how does that how, how is it sounding in each of those registers? You know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. that's important. And I think honestly, I think that's the thing that puts me. Um, I don't want to say a head, but it like makes me like stand out from like a lot of other baritones, like or baritone basses or whatever. It's like that quality I have in like each part of my registers is like mm-hmm. at this point it's almost crazy, you know what I mean? Like I'm still trying to get it be- like better and more solid or whatever, but it's like it's dope, you know, and it's it's cool to have reached that finally now after years and years of forcing myself to try and sing a certain way and now looking at it di- differently, you know? Yeah. And I will say, I will tell you too. Um, I had a similar experience with like not exploring what my voice was truly capable of, but I can confidently say that <laughs> I was actually the other way around. I was a wannabe bass. And oh, that was okay. all I ever sang. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't acknowledge that I actually had a, a semi decent high range. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, come on, listen to me. Listen to me hit these low notes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, would not, you would not believe how badly I wanted to be a bass singer when I was growing up. I believe it. I know because I knew <laughs> I grew up around a bunch of kids like you who were like, well, I can't hit none of these high notes, so I'm about to fake bass my way into the universe, <laughs> you know? So it, it's just how it is sometimes. You want it, you want to be what you want to be, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I wanted to be a Michael Jackson tenor when I, after my <laughs> voice changed and I was like, that's not, that's not who I am. I can't, I can't be that guy, you know? Yeah. And it's it, a certain line comes to mind from Peter's uh, interview with Jeff mm-hmm. and, or actually, you know what? It wasn't in, in that interview, I don't think, but it may have been mentioned, but in a video that Jeff did, I think it was maybe three years ago, he was it was a tutorial on how to sing low. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one of the things that he said that stood out was if you are Ariana Grande and you're trying to sound like, I'm trying to remember who exactly he said, Earl Jones, maybe, oh. um, that, that might not be in the cards. <laughs> right, right. Cause that's just how you're you're built, right? That's how you're. What Roger Rabbit is how is how you're drawn, right? You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all can't be, you know, the super high voice or the super low voice. You kind of just gotta work with what you got and try and you know try and train and find certain ways to extend your range, bottom or 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 top, you know. And if it if it works out, it works out. But if not, you know, just be thankful for what you got. Cause some people don't got nothing. They can't sing at all. Right. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that a lot of us um, singers truly take for granted is the ability to physically sing mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. 
because there's a lot of people who are less fortunate and not able to. And they really want to. Absolutely. They really want to really badly, but they can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, you know, not that I'm laughing at them, but you know. Right. Yeah. You all but, can't do everything, you know. Yeah. It's something that I know that I'm thankful for, 100%. Very much so. Same. Very much so. Hey, we can carry the torch for the people that, that are not able, right? Absolutely. I will do that until the day I die. And even after I die, because I have recorded music, so that music will live forever. Exactly. Exactly. Like Wakanda. <laughs> Wakanda forever. <laughs> that was a good movie. <laughs> love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, man. All right. So, um, who are some of your personal favorite artists that you've collaborated with throughout the years? Oh, man. Personal favorite artist that I've collaborated with throughout the years. I haven't done a lot of collaborations, man, my, most of my career, which is weird. Um, but um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a deep question. Favorite artist that I've collaborated with. And if you're not quite sure if you can find any, you can also list any that you've done with voice play or any specific pieces of work with them that you've done in the past that also stands out. I mean, obviously voice play, like that's the, that's the obvious one, but I'm trying to think right. of more so on the original music tip. The, um, the first person that comes to mind um, is the homie P Butter, man, because um, he, he's a rapper. Um, he can sing a little bit and stuff too. Um, he produces and all of that stuff as well. But like, um, he was one of the first people I worked with who I felt like helped me grow as a writer and as an artist who was trying to find their own voice. Um, so on my first, my first, uh, well, my second album, this would be, um, I guess it was an EP technically too many titles, but, um, yeah. my, my, I want more EP he helped um, co-write a, a good bit of that, that album. And um, every time we wrote something together, like just in the studio, hanging out, like um, he didn't even have to be there. He just wanted to be there. Like just, you know, just because he loves the music making process. And, you know, you know, he fucked with me as an artist and as a writer and stuff. And we just be in there just bouncing ideas off of each other. And every time it was just always gold, like, or platinum, honestly, like, and I'm like, man, this dude, like probably in terms of rappers, like, and like he understands music way more than what I thought he would. Cause most rappers, they just, you know, they hear that, that I worked with, they hear a beat and then they just start spitting something and you're like, okay, that's cool. But do you, do you really understand like the, the story and then like the chord progressions and mm -hmm. all of this stuff and like the building and coming back down and going back up and stuff. I'm, I feel like this guy, like, like just sees everything like when he's writing. So P P butter definitely would be one of my, my, my favorites to collab with on original music for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we got, we got another song. We're going to, me and him are, um, we're making like a reunion. Cause I think 2016, 2017 was the last time we worked on something. So oh, wow. we, got, we got another joint. We're going to be, we're going to be working on soon. It's just, you know, move in and, you know, starting a new job and all that stuff. And, you know, but it's, it's, oh, in yeah. the works. it's in the works. Absolutely. Something to be excited for guys. Always, 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 always. gotta, gotta keep that, that, that original outlet, original music outlet has to stay open at all time. Yeah. And, uh, what's one of your personal favorite pieces of work that you've done with voice play in particular? Pieces of work that I've done with voice play, man. There's too, there's too many to, <laughs> to mention. Oh, I know. But that OG, um, that first one, that, uh, that beautiful low every, every time, like every time I put that one on, it's still, it's still, it still lights the room up. I'm like, man, I can't like, that's one of the first times I can remember myself recording something and then going back and listening. And I'm like, man, did I record that? Like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like almost too good. I'm like, I'm not even that good. Like, how did that come out? <laughs> like, right. I did that. <laughs> right. 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 It's like an outer body experience. I'm like, damn, I, we sound good as hell. On this I, I know <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's super crazy. Like, 
I had that bit on repeat, repeat. I had that on repeat for months when I first recorded that. Cause that was my first time doing like an actual, like acapella, like, like recording, like professional recording and like adding elements of like what I've learned from like the R and B and hip hop world and like throwing it into that and Mm -hmm. making it, you know, making it this really dope thing. Like everybody's flavors was just adding to the gumbo. Like it was, it was crazy. So I think, I think that might be my, my favorite, like overall, like, Oh yeah. And then that, um, Valhalla calling, that was, that was crazy. That was crazy. I was like, man, we on some, we on some Marvel Cinematic Universe with this. <laughs> with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a masterpiece. It was just dope. Like the costumes, the, mu- yeah. the music, the background, like everything was just dope. And then they let me spit some bars in there. Like, you know, and I was like, oh, man, we go, we, 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 y'all getting crazy with it now. You so. ought to see my reaction and analysis video that I did for Valhalla calling. Okay. That was, you sh- <laughs> at and you the very losing beginning, losing your shit. You, you're like, I, now. yeah, I, I, I lost it at the very beginning. Like, <laughs> I absolutely lost it. <laughs> I absolutely lost it. Like I, I was just literally the, 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 the thumbnail I'm making this face right here. Yeah, because you're like, what? It, like, what is this? What's about to happen right now? Like, mm-hmm. it's crazy, man. Like the way they they like kind of like snuck their way into this whole Viking universe thing. I'm like, I didn't even question it. That's how you know I trust like the greatness of like the 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 voice play brain and machine. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, I'm like, why the hell are we dressing up as Vikings? <laughs> <laughs> and i don't question it at all i'm just like all right bet bet this sounds dope all right cool let's go let's do yeah it. i'm a viking now <laughs> yeah did you so did you write your bar did you write your bars i did not and i was a, not. i was i was a tiny bit and not salty but i was like man i wanted to write some something for this but you know the creative process is the creative process so i'm always right. open to you know whatever it is because i know whatever it is is going to be dope regardless mm-hmm. because nine times 9.9 times out of 10 it's always dope so oh, yeah um when it comes to those guys so i'm like you know it's cool but no i for that one i did not get to write my own bars but if we do a valhalla calling part two they're gonna have to let me throw a couple of bars in that, <laughs> in that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely if you want some good entertainment and you got some free time. There are several other react reaction channels that have reacted to that song and particular that section. Their their reactions are absolutely priceless. Mm-hmm. Um, Peter Barber's is pretty priceless. Elizabeth, or I'm sorry, um, Jennifer Glatzoffer, her reaction is pretty priceless. Also, those are <laughs> those are awesome. I love it. I love them all. It was I incredible. love that. I love it, man. It's so dope, man. Like the creativity and the consistency, like it's like, like the way I look at voice play now is like, those are like my big brothers, man. Like I, like I strive to be that creative and consistent, like with my own music one day, you know what I mean? Like, that's like the pinnacle, like the way they like, just keep always, 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 always trucking for is a locomotive. It just never stops. Like mm-hmm. that's how I want to be with my own music one day. And I will be, one day with my own music. I just know oh, yeah. and you got to put your whole self into it and you got to, you got to pace yourself and you just got to keep, keep trucking forward, man, make a plan and keep, keep trucking forward. Oh, so, absolutely. But yeah, absolutely. they got it. They got all the sauce, man. All the sauce. All of it. They're all incredible. The absolutely incredible. That I would have to say that one, your, um, collect, well, back when you were actually in, I believe if I recall correctly, um, when y'all did Oogie Boogie, Mm-hmm. And that one was incredible. And then I'd have to say my other personal favorite collab that you did with voice play would have been friends on the other side. Oh, okay. That one's really that was a good, good too. One too. That was very different for me too. I was like, Oh, y'all gonna let me do a little bit of not quite <laughs> taking over G's ba- bass part, but like getting to kind of show off the lower range a little, a little bit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> sharing, sharing the sugar. Yeah. yeah. 
share in the share in the limelight. I kind of want to do a, another um, Oogie Boogie, like maybe like a Oogie Boogie remix where like me and G are like kind of going back and forth as Oogie Boogie, like because I've got that character voice down so well that I, I think it would just be like super f- hilarious to see both of us like just <laughs> like like playing <laughs> Oogie Boogie going back and forth. <laughs> like, oh, brother. Oh, my. <laughs> I agree. That would be incredible. I think that would be super fun, man, but that would be, we'll see. That would be incredible. Those are some of my personal favorites that you've done with them, but those are good ones. Mm-hmm. You literally can't miss. You can't no. miss with those guys. You can't miss. No, you can't, you can't miss. No, you oh, can't. Oh, bang. Bang was one of my top ones too. Bang was like easily top five. The DJ came in and killed, killed everything he sung on that part. And then everything just there was a swag about the song that was just you know talking about adult adult life and trying to you know grow up and figure out all this stuff and g's hitting this stuff and lane and ellie's body and everything and then we did this crazy little weird riff that i came up with at the end that on a whim and lane just threw it in there and i was like all right cool and everything just pieced together so dope i was like man this this song is dope man yeah. Oh, there's one more that I was forgetting. Your one of your fairly recent projects with them was, um, oh gosh, um, what's? Oh goodness, I can't. Nothing else matters. There we go. Ah, yeah. That, that was, was that killer. was that was different for me. I was like, I was like, what? I was like, what y'all got me singing? What is? This? I was like, what is this? And I went and listened to it, and I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. It and, is and killer. It just, yeah, it just went. It went from there. Like they're always stretching that. That the they're always breaking those borders. Like just just jumping into any genre that they can. Like I'm like, bro, y'all are y'all are brave, man. Because everybody does not do this and do it this well, right? You know? So next level talent, without a doubt. Super next level. Next two three levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What did you, what did you think whenever um you found out there was going to be a violin part in it from Lane? For nothing else matters? Yeah. I think I didn't know until the actual day of the shoot and I was like I was like, "Bro, why you got a violin?" <laughs> he was like, "There's a violin part in there." And I was like, "Um, no there isn't." <laughs> No, there ain't. What you talking about? But there was, there was a violent part in there. So I was like, okay, and ended up coming out super dope. But I didn't hear like the, on the stuff that I was recording. I don't think there was a violent part, or if there was, I just wasn't listening to it. I don't ever recall hearing it in the original. The um, the original, like like the actual song, yeah, 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 yeah. That's again but, being being creative, bro, and be, being brave and pushing pushing borders and just having fun with what you're doing man mm-hmm. like, that's honestly what they're doing at this point just always having fun with what they're doing yeah and i remember so many people like in my comments and in the actual comments of the video as well as other reactors just absolutely losing their minds whenever they saw that vial vial lane was, vial lane as they call it's, it's, it it's his nickname <laughs> i love it i heard that the, uh, for the first time right after the, i did my video on the song <laughs> i was like okay that's gonna stick yeah that's a that's a dope nickname i like that I love especially it. for a beatboxer <laughs> yeah <laughs> no kidding Bio lane boy love it oh that was love fun. it I love, I love like the the video was like super simple, but I love that we were like in all black and having these dope coats and jackets. And I'm like, yo, this mm-hmm. has like, this has like some weird, like really dope swag to it. I don't know what, like how, how else to e- explain it. Like, but I would never hear that song like that. Like, yeah, me neither. I was like, wow, man. Like every time they do something, I'm like, y'all are just crazy, man. Dude, like I said, I just know it's going to be dope. I just trust that it's going to be dope. Every, oh yeah every time yeah. absolutely trust the process all i do is just add my little my little splashes of sauce to it that's it my little mm-hmm. flavor and that that's it and then it becomes a piece of magic 100 mm-hmm. percent. Ooh, tangent there but it, that was a bunch of stuff that we wanted to know about absolutely 
Uh, all right, so um, we got one more question, and then we're going to take a quick breather. So, do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks for anyone that sings or wants to sing, and or is trying to make a career out of singing? Tips, tricks, or life hacks for anybody who wants to sing or make a career out of singing. Mm-hmm. Well. First, you got to learn how to sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like the hardest part, right? Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Like, just, just listen to stuff that you think is dope and then kind of force yourself to listen to stuff that other people think is dope, too, just to get like a little taste for what you know, what the, the, the popular thing is at the time. Like, you always want to stay in tune with what that is at least a little bit um and just copy copy the 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 goats man because that's what i grew up doing i just grew up copying the goats until i kind of started finding my own my own voice but um outside of singing <clears throat> you just want to be like a dope hang like you want to be somebody who people um like want to hang out with and be you know, not maybe like the best of friends with, but you know, at least they know you're a friendly person and you're cool to have around. Like you're helpful. Like you work hard, you show up on time for things like you're dependable. Like th all of that stuff makes you more of a, a, a well-rounded artist and a musician and singer or whatever it is you want to be like it, it, it adds, it sweetens the pot, you know? Absolutely. So just be good peoples, man. And you, the more, the, the harder you work and the, the, the better of a person you are overall, it'll, it'll help you land in, in places that you wouldn't have otherwise. Absolutely. So that's the, that's, that's the advice I have. Absolutely. And at the end of the day too, it's, it also goes back to something that we said earlier is put your whole self into what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Because <clears throat> if you don't, people will notice. One hundred percent. Oh, that's gonna be some noise there. But all right, so we are going to take a quick breather from me asking all the questions. So at this point in time, we're going to give you a few minutes to kind of briefly self-promote, tell us what you got going on in your musical life, in your career, whatever else you want to share, any <clears throat> merch advertise you have the floor for the next few minutes for that oh okay all right just tell me uh tell me when oh you go right for it man right for it okay all right so i just dropped this single called the journey um self-produced uh written by moi uh i got my homies uh daniel kelly howard on the guitar I got Jeremy Sauer on the bass guitar. I got uh, Jared Goodrum on the saxophones. He's the feature on that one, playing the solo at the end there. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just talking about, about life and how, you know, you need to have a different perspective on if you, if you, if you feel like you've made it or, or not made it or kind of made it or whatever, whatever made it looks like to you. Um, this is a feel good song, man. Y'all go ahead and get out a listen. It's on all available on all platforms, streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. Um, and right now I'm in the works on a, a, a new album that's going to uh, show my, my whole self. Um, that'll be dropping at some point next year. <clears throat> but before then, there'll be some music videos and stuff to get you, get you ready for it and whatnot. And, uh, that's all we got for now, man. We're keeping it nice, nice and simple until it's not simple. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> and guys, I will have all of his information in the description like I always do for all the guests. So make sure you go check out everything involving j -Nun. He, I mean, we've already said this, and you probably already know this, but in, in case it wasn't obvious, he's incredible. Pushes out incredible work and inspires so many people. So make sure you go check him out. <laughs> Make sure you go check him out. Pretty please. Yeah. 
All right, so if you are done with your self-promotion piece there, we're going to move on to the next little section where you also have the opportunity to ask me any questions on camera that you may have for me. So you also have the floor for that as well. Questions that I have for you. Mm hmm. Hmm. There might be a couple of couple of questions rattling around up there. Go for it. Um. I guess the most obvious question. So what, what made you want to bring me on to your podcast? So in particular, um, for, let me give you a little bit of context. So back before I started the channel, I had been listening to voice play for the longest time, mm -hmm. the longest time, several, several years. I remember being such a big fan of their content. And I remember seeing you come through at one point and be a regular member of theirs. And I always thought that your voice was very unique. Like, and it was just someone, it was just one of those things where I'm like, oddly interested. Like, I don't know, I can't quite put my finger on why, but I'm like, I want to hear more of that. I mean, I, and, and I list, continued to listen to voice play throughout the years even, and then even until you made your departure, and even after that. But I got to thinking, I was like, well, I like his voice, and then it kind of led into right after I opened the channel. I was like, well, what are the odds that I can get a hold of him, right? And eventually, obviously, we're here now. But in particular, I was also, I started getting very interested in your solo work as well. Mm -hmm. And I've just, I don't know, I've just oddly, oddly interested and oddly satisfied by your voice and I, I really wanted to hear like your story in particular and how you got to where you're at mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's it's truly a blessing to have you on because i'm like wow this is a really cool story you have thanks man absolutely thanks for having me on on the show too man i know it's it's kind of you know weird putting yourself out there and stuff and asking people you know especially going through people because i think we went through one of your um your homies on tiktok I, his name was jordan or something like like that's him yeah. yeah jordan jordan so you know it's just funny how stuff like kind of like links up you're like oh i'm gonna throw this little message out in the air and like they're probably not even going to see it that's how mm -hmm. people feel most of the time when they send me something i know i feel like that when i send you know famous people stuff too and yeah. 10 times out of 10, they don't see the message. I <laughs> yeah. So, you it, know. And it is an odd experience at times. And I'm <laughs> like, so, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm famous. I'm not saying anyone that I ever talked to is famous. But I will say that although with the status that some of the people are in that I try to reach out to, it is an odd feeling sometimes where you go to message them and you're like, at least for me, I know that if my message is even read at all, I know I'm kind of caught off guard because I know how busy they can be. Mm -hmm. and it is a it's an odd but satisfying feeling at the same time to know that they actually read what you said and may actually be giving it some genuine consideration yeah yeah it's definitely super dope man so social media and stuff like that some sometimes really dope stuff like that ends up like this ends up happening and it's yeah it's it's super 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 dope it and, is uh, incredible how networking can land you in touch with some incredible people. Yeah, it literally only takes one message. You're like, dang, you sent that message months ago and then that turned into this? And it's like, oh man, you're like, mm -hmm. it really can be like that sometimes. So it's good to know that that's still possible, you know? Absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. Never know, just gotta take the, take the chance, you know, take the chances. The chances are always zero if you, if you don't. Mm -hmm. Um, Any other ones you got bouncing around? Um, I know you were talking about <clears throat> like singing and stuff earlier. So like, are you like working on original music and stuff like that too? Or like, what, what's that like? I, I am a little bit. So I have a current project that I am working on that I won't reveal too much about, but I, with my fascination for acapella music, I just decided that I wanted to do a cover and that is still actively being worked on. But my primarily, my most of my singing content is over on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Okay, I I, I tend to do um, something that um, has picked up a lot of traction: um, bass talk and uh, bass duets over on TikTok. Okay, and um, I really like doing that. And some something that people seem to like that I do, which I don't think I'm that good at, 
um, they like to see me do vocal percussion as well. Hmm. So, I, I mean, I do that because people like it, but I feel like I'm more geared towards the TikTok duets that I'm doing just to kind of, I'm like putting myself out there, you know, mixing my own vocals, recording parts, and then just toss it out there. And people are like, whoa, that sounds really good. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, people like it. So that means I got to do more, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, but my, my base or my base duets over on TikTok are like my, kind of like my foundation for my vocals, if you will. And I do have that project I'm working on. It is a song from a famous, um, movie that is called, well, I'm going, I'm not going to say the title of the movie in case it is, it can cause issues with, um, YouTube algorithm, but it is from a very famous movie that has the Joker in it and a bunch of others from like, like Batman villains and stuff. I think you okay. probably know the one I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 I'm doing okay. a song. I'm doing a song from that movie. Okay. And it's going to be acapella. You said, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Ooh. But that, that's what's in the works for me at least. Okay. I can dig it. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Don't really have much of a a, a timeline on when it's going to release, but yeah, that's fine. As long as long as you you know doing what makes you happy in the in the the musical realm, you know. Yeah, that's all that matters. We don't. Everybody don't need a time for everything all the time. Some people just be like they know it's coming at some point, you know. Oh, yeah. So that's all you need. That little thought back there is like, oh, it's coming at at some point. You'll hear it. You Absolutely. Know? I'm working on some original acapella music too, so. I'm super Ooh. excited to share some of that stuff because it's going to be like, it's very different for, for me. Like, cause I never thought about music that way until voice play. So now I'm like, I'm going to take what I've learned over here and what I learned as a, a young buck and like combine it all together, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Any others you got bouncing around? I think those are the only ones, man. <clears throat> I gotcha. I gotcha. If you were done with that piece, then we'll move on to the um, a couple of community questions I had sent in. So let me get these pulled up while community. I. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's see. So I just had I just have two for you today. So the first question comes from <laughs> I love this name. Uh, this question comes from Dom the Seafood Crusader. Um, <laughs> What music genres resonate with you the most? Uh, R&B and hip hop for sure. Specifically more so classic R&B like, um, and I know that changes as time goes on, but like 60s, 70s, like R&B and soul music, that's like, I can listen to that all day. And then oh, like, yeah. uh, like 90s and 2000s, like, I guess 90s and 2000s R&B and hip hop as well. I can listen to that all day. So those resonate with me the most. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I like a lot of those too. I've, I've been doing a little bit more of uh, digging into those lately and I've just been really delving into it and I love it. It's a mm -hmm. good era of music. It's just authentic, man. Like mm -hmm. real musicians, real, real singers, like not a lot of auto tune or anything not not a lot of polish like it's just raw like raw yeah. at its raw talent here is form yeah just raw just raw like absolutely I, that's just super dope to me you know it's I love it for our, our time you know yeah and it's um, just it just shows the the true passion and skill that it that it took to really push out music of that quality mm -hmm. love it and the other community question i had was from the bard and his question was, what is the music culture like in the Navy? What is the music culture like in the Navy? I feel like that's a loaded question. Um, in, in, or more specifically, are there any cool songs or musical traditions that you all have? Um, cool songs or musical traditions. There are definitely tons of musical traditions. Um, cool songs. I don't know how to... I don't know how to answer this. Um, I feel like I haven't been in the Navy long enough to answer this question. Um, should just share with whatever you've got, whatever's on your mind. Yeah, yeah. It's trying to trying to sort through the all the information in my head. Uh, traditions. We sing um, anchors away for a lot of things. 
And um, the cor- I'll, I'll say the choral, the Sea Chanters, like, choral version of that song is actually pretty, I feel like it's doper than just singing it by your, yourself anyways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Anchors Away is the, is the tradition. Um, so is Eternal Father. That's another traditional one. But I haven't really gotten to sing that one much yet at this point. Um, but the music culture, at least where I'm at here near um, D.C. is in the Navy is, is dope. Like everybody's super excited and um, working hard to make sure their, their musical units sound amazing and, you know, make sure that they sound amazing. So they're, like I said, practicing pretty much every day. Um, and then meeting up with their groups and units to, to rehearse and make sure everything is like sounding polished. So, you know, when we go do these uh, public and private events that we're representing the country at, at the highest level that we can, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I knew there was a little bit of a musical culture in the Navy because it not it so that don't all five branches have some form of band or choral related yeah. work? Yeah, yeah, everyone has one. So sometimes we do like joint joint services gigs and stuff like that too. So it's pretty cool, man, like meeting other people who have been serving through music for, for years. And, you know, it's a, it's a, a whole nother world like that I didn't even know about like a few years ago. So oh, absolutely. You know, meeting these people who obviously had lives and like performer lives before they joined the, the military and stuff and seeing how they all operate is like, it's just interesting getting a different perspective on music as a whole, you know? Oh, absolutely. I'm sure it's, seems like it would be a pretty eye-opening experience yeah yeah it's very it's very different from being a civilian musician for for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can only imagine <laughs> all right so that'll do it for the community related questions so back to our last few here okay so the we usually kind of do a mini um sprint if you will at the end of the podcast with just about four or five questions Okay. And then we'll wrap this up. So our first question on the last home stretch of questions is, um, what is one of the funniest memories you have from working with any groups you have worked with, one, including voice play? One of the funniest memories I've had mm-hmm. working with any group. Oh, man. <laughs> the, funny, <laughs> the funniest one that pops up before, before uh, voice play. Um, uh, so this group, this this band I sang in uh, called Paradigm Party Band is a we do we did like weddings and big corporate events and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um and lounges and bars. So we did this New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> this ought to be good. <laughs> we did this New Year's Eve gig. It's probably not even going to be that funny to anybody who's listening, but for me, it lives. It's one of those things that lives rent free in my head, like so heavily because. We were playing, you remember that game, um, the heads up game where you have the thing on your phone and when you get, you got to, um, people tell you like words to like, guess what the word is on the phone. And when you get it, you got to flip the phone. So yeah, to the, yeah, yeah. So we were playing that <laughs> and, and one of the singers, the band, we were like, we were like on this suite, this hotel suite playing the game. And one of the singers in the group, she's like holding the phone over her hand and she's supposed to, you know, we guessed. She guessed what the thing was. She guessed it correctly. <laughs> and she's, she's trying to flip her phone and she never played it before. So she like, just does like this whole like jerking motion, like <laughs> with the phone. <laughs> and everybody in the room, everybody in the room, like completely loses it. Like we're screaming for like a good two, three minutes. And like, the, there's like video of it there, for whatever reason. I think it was like taking video. So like we go back and watch the video and like she like just puts the phone down because she can't believe everybody's laughing. Oh my so gosh. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make that up. Absolutely not. It cracked it cracked us up. And it still cracks us up to this day because we were like, what are you doing? Like <laughs> and I think she was the one that wanted to play the game. So you have, we all just assumed she knew how to which way you need to flip the phone if you got it right or got it wrong. But Oh my gosh. Oh man, it was it was hilarious, bro. Like I was laughing. Like I was crying laughing for like three minutes. Like, oh my goodness. So that is hilarious. She didn't get to finish her turn because we all laughed like through her whole Turns, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, 
That is hilarious. Oh, it's too funny, man. Oh my gosh. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. You would have been you would have been dying laughing. Like if you were a fly, you would have probably laughed yourself to death. Like legit. Cause you're like, what is she doing right now? I know, it's crazy. And oh. I'm already a giggly person as is, so I know that I would have lost it. Dying, dying laughing. I think I still have the video somewhere on my phone. I might have to send it to you just so you can get a get a good laugh. That would be amazing. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a funny story with the um with the the voice play fellas the voice players i know there's a ton of them i um, know that you guys have have had a lot of shenanigans in the past yeah there's too many stories man um <laughs> i don't know i'm trying to think of like one of the earlier ones because those are always always the funniest um maybe it was like when we were um like because the when i first started and i was like a sub <clears throat> like for tony mm-hmm like the fellas, like their energy was very much like a group of brothers who would like argue and like bicker sometimes and stuff like that. <laughs> so um, for me, because I grew up with two brothers and a sister. So for me, I always thought that shit was hilarious when they would start like kind of getting into like their little like tiffs and arguments or whatever. Like, yeah. so I'm just sitting there like, um, like I wouldn't say anything. Like I was just standing. Like they'd start. Well, did you wanna? Did you wanna do this this way, or did you wanna do this this way? And then the other person's like, Well, no, motherfucker, I'm not trying to do it. This way. I'm trying to do it this way, and I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> like just watching, just watching them just go ham for like a whole like three or four minutes, and and then it it was just you know guys we squash stuff like super quick, so it's like oh, okay. Yeah. Everyone said what they need to say. Now we can start rehearsing now. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, that's I can't awesome. Remember, I can't remember anything like super, super specific right now, but I definitely remember times like that. Sometimes where that would happen and I'm like. <laughs> Man, this is hella fun. Like being like on the outside, like, <laughs> like not really knowing what's happening, but enjoying the uh the the content that's being presented in front of me live in person every time yeah absolutely oh, um, oh that sounds like yeah, it was a lot of fun again uh, even with that being funny that's like still like a lesson right it's like you know everything's not always gonna be paradise with who you're working with or what, whatever you're doing like you gotta learn how to work through the little the little rough patches um whether they be big you know big ones or small ones or you know. Yeah, it appears my camera has finally shut off. So let me grab a spare set of batteries while you um, while we sit there for just a second. Yeah. Guys, we shall return in just a quick moment. All right, folks, we have returned. Sorry about the second intermission. Um, <laughs> while we were off camera, he said that he's got one more story to share with us. So let us have it. I actually have two two ones. They're small ones though. So. The first it. one is um, Paul, um, uh, voice play sound uh, sound engineer. Um, so one time we were uh, we were just backstage, and, and I think Paul brought this whole like nose hair removal kit with <laughs> like with. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Why do you have this?" And I, I think it's because they were talking about it like the weekend before, like one of our gigs out of town or something. I don't know, but he brought it with him, and it was like this, like it was like this, uh, this stick, this little wooden stick that you put into like this <laughs> bottle of like wax or something, and then he just put it up his nose. <laughs> and Lane, Lane's like filming him doing this and everything, and he just. Pulls it out of his nose and it's just like a bush of hair. <laughs> and, and Paul's like screaming. He's like, <laughs> like as he takes the stick out of his nose. And I'm like, bro, I bet you didn't think you had that much hair in there. <laughs> but we were all cracking up. Cause we were like, Paul, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this here right now? Like <laughs> before, <laughs> like why right now? Why? Like you could have removed your nasal hair, like ooh, at the house, <laughs> at the house before we even left town. But <laughs> that one came to mind. Cause we were all cracking up about that. Oh my um, goodness. 
And then the other one, this joke still lives until this day. This one's about uh, Jeff. So um, I think I was still subbing for them. Like, I don't think I was a, a full-time member yet, but we were at some gig and I don't know what was going on. I don't know, maybe Lane was hitting like different types of beats or something, this gig or whatever. But Jeff was like really, really feeling it, bro. Like this fool was like on stage, like, like, like snapping his... Like he was like jerking back and snapping like super hard and one leg up and everything. And I'm like, <laughs> bro, like I was like, like I looked over at him while I was singing and I just bust out laughing while I'm on stage. I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> so from that day forward, me and Lane would recklessly, like relentlessly like joke G about like snapping for anything because he's always snapping. He's always snapping for something, whether it's like a light snap for like a little, the beginning, like soft intro of a song, or if it's for something mm-hmm. big, he's just always snapping. So me and Lane will like snap like in the air or like snap behind us <laughs> or snap <laughs> underneath our legs. And we'll do it on stage too, like while we're having shows and stuff. And sometimes Lane would do it like real discreetly, like, like this. And I would like crack up laughing while we're like performing in front of people. And I'm like, bro, you got to stop doing that. So, He's not uh, going to live it down. No, definitely never. Be, and we only, only caught him one time snapping off. I call it snapping off. But he was snapping <laughs> off like this, like on stage, like super crazy, just all over the place. And I'm like, bro, you got to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> you got to calm yourself, brother. <laughs> so we still, we still do it to this day. Like sometimes when we're doing video shoots and stuff, Lane will like do like a snap behind his back. And like I'll be cracking up. I'm like, man, you got to stop. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to have to, this, I, this is now a mandatory thing. When Jeff comes on for the podcast at some point, I'm going to have to ask him about this story about the snap off. The snap yes. off. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask him about this now. <laughs> we still joke him for the snaps. We can't help it. We can't I'm gonna have to, I want to hear Lane's side too whenever I get him on in the future also. <laughs> Lane Lane is the biggest, he's the most mischievous out of or <laughs> mischievous, however you want to say it, out of out of everybody. Like he's always plotting something. Even even if he's not aware of the fact that he's plotting something, he's always plotting something. Yeah, absolutely. I believe it hundred <laughs> percent. The biggest little kid ever. Easily. I believe it. I'm gonna be the same way when I hit that age, hundred percent. Me too. All right, so a couple more and then we'll wrap this up. So uh, what are your thoughts on extended techniques in music and singing? Extended techniques in music and singing. What Mm -hmm. is that? So, for example, um, Jeff's subharmonics. Subharmonics are an extended technique. Okay. Um, In particular, you also have others such as like inhale bass. You also have vocal fry other techniques that extend your natural range but are okay. not actually part of your natural range okay oh i think i think it's dope man anything that adds more um colors and different sounds to the plate like i think it's dope man because it's just opening our ears up more and allowing us to be more creative instead of just being stuck in you know, the same box of, okay, this is your chest. This is your falsetto. This is your mix, whatever, you know? Yeah. So if you can find different ways to play around with <clears throat> any, any of that stuff you just mentioned, I think that's dope as hell, you know? And, yeah, I agree. And I'm one of those people where I'm like, well, I bought them out at a, at an A1 in chess most mornings. And I, I'm just like, well, I like an A1, but I don't know if I can go lower. And then I discovered subharmonics and then I discovered inhale bass. And then I discovered chest fry and I'm like, right. Oh, okay. So I can do the stuff that Jeff's and Jeff and other people are doing now. Mm-hmm. Also, I can just think people make a living, you know, like yeah. if, if certain people didn't have that stuff and people weren't interested in, in it, interested in it, then they wouldn't even be making a living. You know what I mean? Like they would just mm-hmm. be like another normal singer you know so whatever whatever broadens the musical horizons you know i I think is dope i'm with it absolutely i mean it's just extended techniques allow you to just do stuff like this Mm -hmm. it's it's silly i love it it's dope it's just it's just adding more to the 
it's just more, more in your arsenal. That's all it is. That's it. Absolutely. All right, a couple more. Uh, do you have perfect pitch? I do not have perfect pitch. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Do you <laughs> do you have like maybe relative pitch, perhaps? I'd say I probably have relative pitch, but I'm pretty certain I do not have perfect pitch. Um, I can tell you definitively that it is not all that it's cracked up to be. Yeah, <clears throat> I hear sometimes it can be like kind of annoying because you like want your brain forces you to hear stuff a certain way and you're like that's not what's really happening so it's like a, a inner battle like an inner struggle you know <clears throat> that is an accurate statement my friend <laughs> i will hear a door open and i and my brain is telling me what pitch the door creak is and i'm just i'm just like stop please <laughs> <laughs> it's so that it's painful that sounds painful <laughs> it, not physically but definitely um emotionally painful i'm just or, please yeah, stop yeah. i'm trying to sleep <laughs> right 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 just let it go it's okay we don't have to know what what no <laughs> the door is making. or the or even my heat pump like my heat pump will cut off. i just cut my heat on because it's starting to get cold up here in north mm -hmm. carolina mm -hmm. like i'm trying to go to sleep it's midnight my brain is just doing its thing, trying to wind down. Heat pump kicks on, and then it's just going like, and I'm like, my brain's telling me, that's an A flat. It's an A flat, and I'm like, stop, <laughs> stop. It's like it's like a condition at this point. It's like it's like don't play any pitches around this man. He has perfect pitch. Don't let anything make a, a musical noise. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, it's really cool, but it's also really annoying at the same time. <laughs> I, I remember when I was trying to figure out my range when I was um like younger, probably like high school age, sophomore, junior year. Um, I'd be like, okay, so I start botching out like around like a F, F sharp. So, or like, I have to like really try to like sing those notes. So I'm like, when I would hear something, I would hit, I, I'd hear a pitch and I try and hit it and I'd be like, okay, I'm not struggling. So that's gotta be like a B flat or A or whatever. Yeah. And I, if I hear something and I, would, I try and hit it again, I'd be like, oh, I'm struggling. That's gotta be like a G or A flat or, <laughs> yeah. or, or, you know, something like that, you know? Yeah. So yeah. That, those are like my earlier memories of like trying to figure out like, Pit, like pitch and stuff just in the air or whatever yeah yeah it's it's uh it's it has its perks but it has its downsides yeah that's with everything though pretty much pretty mm -hmm. much yeah all right so um two things what is one of your favorite things about being a singer it's you can you can take this any direction you want <clears throat> one of my favorite things about being a singer mm-hmm um expression man just just being able to like i hear i hear something and um being seasoned enough to be able to just be like oh i hear that and i can like figure it out musically and just just being able to be expressive in, mm -hmm. in that way is like i couldn't imagine my life without it like it's so a part of who i am like so i'm i'm, I'm just grateful and happy that I'm, I'm able to be expressive that way pretty much whenever I want to. And it's amazing to be able to express yourself <clears throat> that way. <clears throat> it's crazy. Amazing. It by far, it is one of the coolest things on the face of the planet. And last question to finish out with a bang. Um, if you could steal a fellow singer's voice, um, <laughs> alive or pa alive or passed away, <laughs> whose would it be and why? Oh man, I hate when I get asked this question because it's so it's so hard to it's so hard to choose. Oh yeah, it is. Oh man, um, said if I could steal someone's voice alive or past. Um, oh man, see now my brain my brain's got like maybe like four or five people like pushed to the front right now. If you can, you can even talk about specific aspects of their voice that you'd like. I don't know, man. I'm trying to think like who, who I would go to for like the, the all around like package. Like, uh, I think like who comes to mind first is like, maybe like, it's like, a, it's like a tie between like Donny Hathaway and Brian McKnight. Ooh, those are good ones. Their voices are just 
like endless and and crazy. Mm -hmm. Like so, I I don't I don't know, man. That's a that's those are a, some really uh, solid choices. Uh huh. And then honorary mentions of like <laughs> Luther Vandross, like Luther's great. Stevie Wonder. Oh yeah, one of the legends. Avery Wilson, <laughs> Charlie Wilson. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll go tie between uh, Donny Hathaway and Brian McKnight. I'll just I'll just it'll have to be a tie. A like, couple of it, true legends there. Mm -hmm. True legends. Just crazy Ooh. vocal abilities, man. Like crazy tones, crazy vocal abilities. Like all of that stuff is just next level, man. Like beyond next level, just out, out of this universe. No doubt about it. Guys, make sure you go check those two singers out if you haven't. They are beyond incredible. Mm -hmm. Guys, we are actually about time for us to wrap this up. We've actually run a little long for this one, um, but <laughs> it's been a heck of a time. So, we are going to wrap this episode of the Vocast up. Jaynon, <laughs> it was incredible having you here, my brother. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. It was awesome having him. Guys, if you enjoyed the podcast and you would like to see more podcasts and more guests in the future, it's like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you like, drop comments down below, even if it's just a smiley face. It helps with the algorithm significantly. I will have all of Jaynun's information listed in the description below, so you can go check out his individual work, as well as any other work he's done with other groups. Voice play and... I'm serious. Go, go go check out his individual work. Masterful vocals, to say the least. And before you go, make sure you check out the Patreon link if you're looking to support the channel in a bigger way. And if you are not subscribed, what are you waiting for, my friend? We've got a lot of really cool stuff planned in the future, and we look forward to having you around. Make sure you hit that bell and make sure you're notified every time I upload. Guys, this is it for episode 18. We love you. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Peace.